Hi, this is Brian with Profitless Media and Post. Today we're going to talk about some of the ways we can use the Locator 3D node in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. We'll take a look at how we can add 3D locations to our 3D scene, and also how we can use those locations to produce 2D tracking data, which we can then use for things like animating masks, points, and corner pins. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. And you can see here we already have a composition set up. We have our media in, we have our 3D scene, which we brought in from Synthize, and our media out. So I'm just gonna play through this real quick so you can see what we have here. So we have a decent 3D camera track and you can see we have a pretty nice point cloud. So one of the things that we run into quite often is that we have this great point cloud, but we don't have points where we need them. So for example, maybe we need to replace the screen here. So we could go back to Synthize and use Synthize to make those points, but we can also do it here in Fusion using the Locator 3D. So let's select our 3D scene, add in a Locator 3D, and let's turn on Make Renderable. You can see immediately that we have a locator that's rendered in the scene. If you're not seeing the point cloud, it's because you need to set your camera renderer to OpenGL. So let's go back to this locator. The next thing we need to do with the locator is come down to the camera settings and we need to change our camera settings and make sure that they're correct. So that it's camera one, and we also need to make sure that the resolution is correct, which is 1920 by 1080, and that is correct. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna take this locator on one frame and locate it at the point that we want and have it set up so that it is positioned like it was projected from our camera. That way we'll have the X and Y position. Then we're going to move to another frame and triangulate that point by using the Z axis to find the actual depth of the location. So that way we'll get the X, Y, and Z coordinates of that location. So that may sound a little confusing, but let's see how this is done. First, let's split into two views. In the first view, let's make sure we have the 3D viewer. Make sure it's in perspective. And in the second viewer, let's make sure we have the camera renderer so we can see what we're looking at. So now we can just take this 3D locator and bring it over. And we just want to position it. It doesn't really matter this is pretty loose at this point. We just want to get it in the right position in 2D space in this window. We can zoom in a little bit if you want to make it easier to line it up. So right there in the corner of the monitor. So for this to work though, we need this Z axis to be like it was being projected from the camera. So we need this to point directly at the center of that camera. The way we can do that is come over to the Transformation tab, and at the very bottom, turn on Use Target. And what we need is that target to be exactly at the position of the camera. Now there's a couple ways we can do this. We can go into the camera and we can copy each one of these X, Y, and Z, and paste it in there. Or inside the locator, we can go to the target just right click on each one, X, Y, and Z, and go down to Connect To, Camera, X Offset. And that will grab that translation information. So we need to do it to each one. And we don't want the animation though. We want it just to be locked at this point. So let's take the target and right click, remove all from target group, and that will keep this point. So on frame four, we have the X, Y coordinates of that point in 3D space. So now let's just start moving forward. You can see that it's sliding off. Now all we need to do, because we have the X and Y position, all we need to do is get the Z. So if we just grab just the Z axis and nothing else, and we reposition this, so it's right in the corner, there you go. Now we should have the 3D location because we just triangulated it. So now as we go through, you can see that that point sticks perfectly in the corner of the monitor. Now we just need to do the other three corners. So there's another way that you can do it also. Instead of setting up the locator right after the 3D scene, we can also set it up right after the camera. 
So if I take this locator and I'm going to shift and drag it out, I'm going to bring it up here and I bring the camera directly into the locator and then we take the locator and bring it into our 3D scene, we'll get the same results. Just another way to do it, but the same thing. So now that we have this one, we want to get the other three points for the rest of the monitor. So what we can do is just copy it and then just paste three times. Now it is good practice. You name each one of these because it can get pretty confusing. For this example, I'm just going to leave it the same, but I'm going to keep these in order and I'm going to line them up clockwise. So I'm going to go to the second one. And this is going to be the top right. And I'm just going to grab that locator. Technically, I should be on frame four. So let's go back to four. And we're just going to line that up. And then let's go to the third one. And this is going to be the bottom right. Something like that. And then the fourth one. So now we have them at the beginning position. And we just kind of go down to the little bit later. And then we just reposition each one only in Z to make sure that they line up. Something like that. Go to the next one. Oops. There we go. So now those should be lined up perfectly all the way through the entire shot. So now we have our 3D locations. And at this point, if we wanted to, we can use these 3D locations for setting up a card in 3D space. Uh, but the real purpose of using the locator 3D is to generate 2D information that you can use for tracking. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. I'm going to bring this, our main media up here. And I have this second piece of media. And this is going to be for a screen replacement. So if I bring that media up, and it's already set to 920 by 1080, so it'll match the composition. And I'm going to merge that over our media in. And let's merge that like this. And in this media in, let's corner pin this. Let's add in a corner positioner, add it right there. Now all we need to do is select those locators that we made for each one of these corners. So if we bring this up a little bit, So the top left one was locator 3D1. We right click, go down to corner position or top left, connect to 3D1 position. Now you can see that point snapped right to the top left corner. So let's go through and just quickly do each one of these other ones. Okay, there you go. Now this is perfectly lined up with the screen. Let's turn that off. You can see now that we have our screen replacement for a 2D composition. So you can do it either way. So that's just a couple of different ways you can use the locator 3D. Another way that you can do it, and I'll just show this last example, is that in our 3D scene, let me uh, bring our media back in. I disconnected it. We have this whole point cloud too. Now, for example, this point right here, we wanted to do a roto shape and, you know, to mask out something right here. What we could do, we can grab one of these points from our point cloud and convert that to 2D tracking data too. So we can use it for our roto shapes. And let me show you how you can do that. And let's look through the camera so we can see the points. I'm going to select that point. I'm going to right click, come down to the camera 01 cloud 3D. And at the very bottom, you see, can see create locator. And that creates this. I'm going to delete the merge. And I'm going to take this tracker and I'm going to drop it right into our 3D scene. Now this is just like these locators here. So if we look inside the tracker, you can see it's the same operation. So I'm going to turn on Make Renderable. Now you can see the point. 
we need to go down to the camera settings. You can see now the camera is not added in, so we're going to have to add that camera in. So let's grab the camera, drop it on the tracker, and now we have our camera 01. We need to make sure that's the right resolution. You can see now it's 320 by 240, which is wrong, so let's click Auto Resolution. And now we should be all set to be able to use that tracker. So now down here, let's add in a just a simple composition. Let's add a background. Throw that up there and let's grab a an ellipse. And let's just scale that down some. Maybe something like that. Now all we have to do is right click on the center, go down to the ellipse center, and connect to our tracker 84 position. Now we have that roto shape tracked throughout an entire scene. That's just another way that you can use your 3D data to convert into 2D animation. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you again in the next video.